why I love writing for the theater. Well, I've, I have always been a songwriter as well, but I find that the, the, um, it's like anything goes when it comes to the theater. And I, I, that's, I guess that's what I love is that there's, um, it, as far as the complexity of harmony, any single, any potential style I want to want to use. Um, th there's, you're not as boxed in with the, with theater work. You can really kind of write, take a song in any direction you want to where writing it, writing in the pop world is a little more, um, it's just a little more limited to me. And, um, I love that there's, it's, I, I could kind of use all my skills and, you know, in terms of harmony possibilities and also be so much, so much more melody driven, um, which is really important to me too. Um, the other thing is I've loved the challenge of working with lyricists that just hand me a finished lyric, you know, for, of a scene and I got to figure it out. I it's at first it was petrifying. It's still a little petrifying every time I get a new lyric, like, can I do this? I don't know. And then I've, I, you know, I just kind of keep at it and it, something always emerges. Um, it, it's just, I just think that there's more complexity in theater that is the challenge of that is really gratifying and satisfying. So that's what, why I love to write for the theater. Um, Jerusalem AD, my first show was like that too. So I had done that before, but it, it is a larger, you're biting off a lot of a much bigger um, challenge to do something like that. You know, it, when it's just songs inside scenes connected by lots of dialogue, I don't know, there's, a, that's, everything's challenging, but I'm mean, having to kind of musicalize everything. Um, and this was way more complex than Jerusalem AD too. Um, the, uh, it was a big, I, I, I'll tell you the truth. Um, I feel like I, I knew it was going to be a challenge. I had no idea what a challenge it really was. And if I had known, I, maybe, maybe I would have, you know, chickened out and said, let's just write it as a standard musical. But, you know, we stuck, we, we kind of came up with this idea together, Patricia and I, to turn this into more of like a rock opera. And, um, and it was, you know, there were moments where we just thought, oh, let's just make this a scene. And then we thought, no, it's, you know, we've come this, we've come this far. It's, it's all music wall to wall now. Why stop now? Um, it's anyway, it's been such a, so gratifying that we, we stuck with our, stuck to our guns about it. Um, I'm really proud of how it's come out. The theater experience is unique because you are going through the journey of these actors with them. It's, um, and, and the, and the purpose of music in a, in a, in theater is because the, the emotion is so heightened, you got to sing about it. So you can imagine this, it's very, there's a lot of heightened emotions in Paths of Catherine. It's, um, as because of that, because it's of it being so much music, but I mean, that's the thing. You're just, you're just following along with the emotional journey of these, of these characters so much more than, um, it, it's so much bit more visceral because, you know, you're, you're watching a live journey that somebody is going through as opposed to seeing it just on a screen. I love the, I, I, I love these, um, many musicals that, that, sh that have music that goes against type of the actual show itself, like Spring Awakening. It's always been one of my favorite shows. I love, you know, the uptight, world of you know turn of this turn of the 20th century um you know 1900 ish um uptight germany and they and these kids singing just all this rebellious rock and roll stuff you know um i loved i love jesus christ superstar and all the um the rock and roll influence in that sun through show um obviously hamilton um i studied that show so much too so all of those shows, I would say those are the three shows stylistically that probably informed me and influenced me the most. Um, you know, I was, as, as I spoke before, that we, we just fit, thought this show might, would be, because of it just being 
scene after scene of just these three women, it was like, it was a challenge to think, how do we keep it spicy with, with it only, with only having three women and you see that all, and it's, I, I begged many times to Patricia, let's have at least one guy in this, in this cast. So he could play Peter and he could play uh, King Frederick back in Germany and the, and this, and the ambassador that Joanna is, is, you know, um, getting close with to get all the spot, all the secrets from. And, it, you know, <laughs> that was my idea. I wanted to, like, I was just felt we needed more people on stage. And Patricia was like, no, we have to keep this. We're going to keep this three women. We're going to tell this story with just these three girls. And we did it. I'm really proud that we, I, she didn't, I'm very happy. She didn't, uh, you know, give in to give in to me. Um, I feel like we told the story in an interesting way because of the fact that it's sung through. So everything, and they all have their own little musical themes that keep kind of reoccurring. Um, so every, you know, all the emotions can be just are, 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 um, expressed by the way, by the style of each song. Some of the songs are kind of rappy and really back firing back and forth with really tense dialogue. Um, some are really these sweeping, you know, big, beautiful melodic um, songs. Everything's a little different. We have like, we have this, what we call spy music that we use throughout the show. When Joanne is just, you know, writing her letters you know, to King Frederick, trying to like pacify him, giving him information and all of that. We've, we've got all these different styles of music that kind of feed into the emotion of that scene. So the sung through, pass through style of writing for this show really, I think it was really effective and makes this show unique because of that. Because the show just is such a small theater, we made the decision to not use drums and bass in which it, the, sh the score's written for that, but we've chose not to do it that way. We're, we're, we're um, producing this show with me on keys and a cellist and a guitar player. So it's kind of a little unusual um, threesome that we have, but I, it's kind of been the perfect little trio. The cello can, can play some low stuff and sort of function as the bass player sometimes. Um, you know, we, it's been fun to write for the cello to give it for where he can play a lot of like rhythmic stuff, good stuff, you know, so you, you're still getting some rhythm, but coming out of cello in an interesting way. But then of course I use them also to play all these like beautiful sweeping melodies. And then the guitars used all, I'm using him in every possible way too. Yeah. I mean, he, he plays, you know, some big rock anthem anthemic melodies, but then he's of course like chugging and playing lots of rhythm too. He also plays on acoustic guitar. So it's, it's kind of interesting, right? We've got a lot of different textures for just the three of us. So um, that's been, that's been kind of neat too. And it, you know, the next, the next iteration that we do, hopefully we'll have even a bigger band, but it's been fun doing it with just these, these two guys plus me. I want them to walk away. First of all, feeling like they really got an interesting slice of history to want to get to know more about about Catherine the Great. I hope they'll want to go to the website and listen to, to some of the songs again. Um, we hope to to release um, our songs on an album soon. I, I guess I just want. I would love this because the way we wrote this show, like there's all these musical themes that keep reoccurring and get used as underscoring and. And, and just, just come back in all these different sort of ways. I, I feel like it's the kind of score it, you should want to listen to again and again and like, and, and get all the nuggets. Get, it's one of the, I feel it's one of those shows that the more you listen to it, the more you get it. Like uh, Hamilton's kind of that way, right? We've all had to, you know, we've all had that experience where every time you listen to Hamilton, there's more you get from it you catch a little bit more from that song and that song because it's uh, so rapid fire. There's some of that with, with the Cat, our Catherine show. And I would hope that it would be a satisfying enough for the audience that they would also want to return to it and like get even deeper into it and get even more, you know, understanding why, why did we use that song under to pull back, to bring back and rep reprise here and, or to sing, there's there's reasons for every musical moment in the show. There's reasons for it, and I and I I hope that people will want to 
um, engage in our show enough that they want to like discover all those little gems. Cause there's a lot of gems that you, I don't know that in one listing, you get it all. Um, I love that kind of discovery about musical theater when a show is so deeply researched and written that you, you get more, it's, you know, it just gets more and more clear each time you, you experience the show. I feel like Catherine's that way too. As the, the pianist, kind of, I'm sort of the engine under the, you know, kind of, I'm the one, you know, I'm, I'm conducting the band and I'm really breathing with and experiencing the story with the girls. I really am. It's like, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm really truly breathing with them as they sing, as they perform each song and um, feeling this, the songs w- along with them. So as I'm doing that, of course, I'm also got one ear towards the audience and just trying to understand, experience how they're, you know, listening to the, for the audience's reaction. Um, you know, it's a nice intimate theater where we're playing so I can see the audience. I am not that I'm looking at them all that much, but I can, you know, steal some, some um, looks and kind of see how it's, how it's playing. So, you know, so there, there is that. I've, I've, the next iteration, I'll be ready to use it, use somebody else at the piano and sit in the audience like Patricia's getting to do. There's just been so many little like uh, segue moments and in, it's, you know, moving from song to song that I have felt in my, you know, control freak way that I've had to still sit at the piano and make sure there, everything is really massaged out and worked through before I was ready to turn it over to another pianist and let him or her, you know, lead the show. I, I just still needed to be at the piano for one more iteration. So that's what this has been. I am Jan Roper, the composer and the music director for The Path to Catherine. This is a 90 minute sung through fast moving rock musical that's playing at the Brick House Theater in, in North Hollywood. And I just want to invite everybody to come out. It's a beautiful production. It will, you will walk away just so intrigued with who young Catherine the Great was as a teenager and what were the um, incidences that set her on her path to eventually becoming Russia's empress. And um, uh, I would love to see you there at the theater on for Saturday nights at seven. Sundays at three and some Fridays, the 15th and the 22nd as well. Please come and see the show. It's, um, it's going to be, it's challenging and it's beautiful and it's fun all at the same time. See you at the theater.